Okay, this is my second random box of crap video, and already just looking on top of the box here, it's these things seem to be much more interesting than what we saw in the first video. And you can clearly see these all these Radio Shack Archer packages here. Very interesting stuff because these these are from basically from Radio Shack's golden years in the mid 80s. There's a lot of stuff here that you can never find in a modern day Radio Shack. They just they just don't sell this kind of good stuff anymore. So let's see what we got. We got a LM3914 LED bar dot display driver. Not bad. 7912 voltage regulator. 16K dynamic RAM. Man, I don't think you can get this in any Radio Shack these days. Tri-color LED, red, green, yellow. Oh, it's bi-directional LED. So it'll be red if you send the current one way and green if you send the current the other way. Tone ringer. Look at that. You can make your own touch-tone telephone with this thing. Oh, and here's the LM3916. This is a VU. So this has a logarithmic scale for the... Uh, for the LED bar display, whereas the other one I showed you, the 3914, that had a linear scale. And then we got this fiber optic emitter detector set, very nice. Low power signal channel, say, oh, that's a T TLC 7271 op amp. Let's see, what's this? I don't know, voice synthesizer top of the package is cut off but it says back here voice synthesizer there's another one right here look at that voice synthesizer so I can make my own speak and spell basically if I wanted to look at that it even comes with the own with the data sheet printed out inside the package that's that's amazing here's another integrated circuit phase lock loop tone decoder part number 567 here maybe you can see the the window on top of this little tra transistor package. It's a light activated SCR. There's no part. I already looked on this. And there's no part number on the side of the can. I have, really, I have no idea exactly what the specs are other than what's given on the back of the package. Oh, look at this. Yeah, I was just on the EEV blog forum complaining about the XR2206 and the XR2212 have recently gone obsolete. So these are probably coming in handy, but if, if we continue using them, probably not. IRF DZ13 MOSFET. Just one single little four pin dip package MOSFET. Ah, there is one of the LED bar graphs and it says smashed, but even though it's the pins are bent down, they seem to be intact. Here's another smashed part, the, the 8038 function generator. Again, that's also obsolete. Here's an A to D converter IC, the TLC548. Hmm, what's this? Fuzzco Bing Box. Circuit diagram and instructions. Let me see if I can open this up. What the heck? Look at this. It's all hand drawn. There's an LM317 power supply circuit up here, 556. Looks like it's straight out of one of one of those Radio Shack um, project books, like this one over here. I think. Yeah, here we go. I've had these for a long time. These engineers' mini notebooks from Forrest M. Mims, the 555 timer, and op amps, and all that other good stuff. I use these a lot throughout the years. See what's this? Another light activated SCR, two of them. 
another low power single channel op amp and or MOSFETs touch tone decoder IC SS1202 there's another op amp replacement transistor 2017 NPN silicon here's a data sheet oh that's for the programmable op amp the TLC 271 which is right here here's another PLL another VU dis bar graph display and just a bunch more of the same stuff that we've seen already here there's another AD converter chip bar graph CMOS triple three input NAND gate pick out some more of these Radio Shack things here. This looks like probably another voice synthesizer, I'm not sure. Another data sheet. That's awesome how these things actually came with the data sheets attached to them. 16K dynamic RAM. PN Junction Silicon. Just a single individual transistor. What is that? 2N6 2646. We got some 30 gauge Kynar insulated wire wrap wire. Another data sheet. So there's this little circuit board right here. Got this aluminum bar going across, and then these header sockets. I have no idea what this is for. all these through hole components on this single layer circuit board which is actually starting to go bad in certain places you can see how it's the copper is just being very slowly eaten away by something but a LM324 quad op amp I recognize that oh and there used to be some wires right here they've been desoldered little ribbon cable Here's some Molex connector. Look at a single, oh, there was originally two capacitors, 0.1 microfarad mylar insulated cap. We saw a whole bunch of those in the previous video. More fiber optic modules there. Let's see what's in this Nature's Pantry Herb Products awesome container for an assortment of resistors and a few capacitors inside there. Let's see, we got a little rotary switch, somebody's homemade inductor with a variable ferrite core in there. Hmm, this is, look at that. This must have been for some electronics, introductory electronics kit with all the, the parts individually labeled so for easy identification. Some IC sockets, nice little breadboard, RCA phono jack, capacitor. Let's see what these are, more IC sockets. Mini grabbers, parallel port to serial converter, and little, little bits of junk there. What's this? Another display driver bar graph, and here's the 8038. Video detector, MC1330. Don't know what that's all about. Sub miniature red LEDs, originally two in this package. What was the price? 79 cents for two measly LEDs. Adjustable voltage 317. Another LM3916. Looks like somebody's little homemade. 
Oh, there's a couple of screws here. Hold on, let me unscrew it. Okay, here we go. Huh. Little rotary switch. All the grounds are connected on these things and signal paths. Uh, here we go. This is the common, and then you can select either this one, that one, or that one for connection to the common. So that's what that thing is all about. Let's see what else we got here. There's a 7408 quad two input AND gate. Ah, look at this little calculator touchpad. Awesome. I actually have some calculator ICs that I might just potentially use this touchpad for and then I can have my own homebrew calculator. Ooh, speaking of calculators, this is the, uh, the paper for the desktop printing calculator. And we got a whole bunch of Things mounted on a DIN rail. Stuff for some very thick gauge wire in here too. Resistors, empty resistors. There's another end channel MOSFET. Huh. A single capacitor. And here's another op amp. All right, let's look in these plastic containers here. So this one has a lot of little single pole double throw slide switches and that's pretty much it. Some little miscellaneous hardware here. I think there's another one that had sw switches in it. I mean, let's look at this one here. This one has a bunch of little pots here on on the uh, ceramic ceramic substrate pots got 5k some power resistors oh look at that very interesting there's these things here these little precision multi-turn pots and then there's these panel mount things too so apparently I could put potentially and line up the holes properly there we go so I could just stick it right there. This will go in the panel with a nut, and then there's a hole there for, for the adjustment screw and holes to mount this thing to it. So that's very interesting. Just some more pots, miscellaneous transistors. got here a whole bunch of assorted parts it's a bunch of different transistors there Motorola mostly little rainbow assortment of LEDs I mean uh, resistors and capacitors what's this little part here Motorola MC 1550G don't know what that is Look at that. It's got a really yucky looking um, crystal earphone earpiece. And some other connectors here, some RF connectors and audio RCA jacks. Here's a whole bunch of connection hardware. All these little Looks like silver plated uh, terminals there, solder terminals, rivets, some wire nuts, very nice. And see in this one, we've got, look at that, GE1N3718. 
super tiny little diode there. I wonder if it might be a tunnel diode. I'm not sure. I'll have to look it up. Wow, that's a really, really ancient LED right there. I certainly don't make them like that anymore. But yeah, there's other diodes here. This is this seems to be the diode container for sure. And then there's these things. What is that? Oh, little tiny thermocouple or some kind of thermistor or something for high temperature measuring, high temperature measuring stuff. Oh, awesome. Back, we got acorn shaped vacuum tubes. RCA CRC 955. We got some really ugly dry rotted grommets here. What's this? Omite oh, Rheostat. Let's see what this looks like. Wow, that's that's good quality stuff right there. Only two ohms, 2.5 amp capacity. That's good stuff. So here's a whole bunch of different ICs. Got the 8080. That looks like an ADC. It's Intracell ICL 7106. I really don't know exactly what. Oh, here's a 4000 series, the CD4018. CD4071. There's another 4071, 4026. Yeah, mostly for RCA 4000 series ICs in here. So this looks like IC sockets. And here's seven segment displays. Some dip switches. Oh, we got some mobs here. And, oh, look at that, read relay. Cut, cut, three read relay, read relays in here. And what's this little mystery part? Wow, look at that, it's a copper can. Very interesting. What does that say? Then wall, I think that's a relay. Let's scrape this off here, 2.5 amp, 115 volt AC. Or no, I really don't know what the heck this thing is. Hmm, very interesting. There's some other little switches in here, push button switches. And, wow, we got some really old parts in here. Look at this. Omite 600M, oh, 600 milliamp plate choke. This, so this be a RF choke for for the uh, the plates, uh, the uh, vacuum tube anodes. Z-28, 20 to 60 megacycles. Because <laughs> back then they didn't have hertz. It was megacycles per second. Hmm. So that's a precision coaxial variable capacitor. You just got a little screw terminal in there and you can vary the, vary the capacitance by moving that internal cylinder up and down. Some light bulbs, a little neon lamp here, some springs, some insulated standoffs, another little relay here. Yeah, this is all inductors and variable capacitors. And these are probably germanium diodes. See, 1N118. So these are very interesting. Look at this. Some little mercury thermometer, a super tiny little thing. What the heck? Wow. I have no idea what the heck this is for. It says 75 degrees Celsius on the label. Here's others. 65 degrees Celsius. 
75 and 65. And again, another 75. Very interesting. There's this little two metal rings on the outside. There's no connection to the mercury inside. I can't, I really have no idea what these could be for. Maybe temperature activated variable capacitor where you have the capacitance between this ring and the, the mercury inside. And then the other ring that those two Siri capacitors could potentially be used for uh, with uh, temperature dependence. But I really have no idea what these would be for. Hmm. So here's a precision multi-turn pot. And this is a little connector. So what the heck is this? These are little hour counters. Don't know what voltage it gets, 120 volts or maybe 12 or 24, but you can see it's, it's probably already been tested a little bit in the factory. They're both at 0, 04 on the in the red 12 volt lamps here. So that's pretty much it for this box. Very interesting. Well, that's it for that. I hope you like watching that stuff. Thank you to David JF for donating all this cool stuff and also to Claudio for inspiring me to make this kind of random box of crap video. Um, so please give this a thumbs up and I'll see you later. Bye. Where's my remote control?